Hi, this is David Valade with AltaVista Technology. We have a little bit of a different video today. On the first half of this video, I was going to show an example of how I can have custom fields inside of Sage Intact. And then in the latter half of the video, exclusively for our AVT Advantage subscribers, I was going to show how I can use those fields in a custom report. So I'm showing an example of a report here. This is a little bit of a funny one, but I had an example here. Uh, let's take a look at this reports and see what, what we're doing. Um, one thing is I have this uh, Olympic medal <laughs> categorization here. So I have gold customers, silver, and bronze. You can see the labels right here. And I'm showing gold, silver, bronze. Uh, you would not be shocked to know that those are not native fields inside of Sage Intact. So I had to add those fields uh, to use in reporting later. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. We're also doing something uh, interesting here. Uh, I'm showing revenue, but I've broken my revenue by project. Now, this is one specific example, but if you take a moment, you could see there's a lot of things, a lot of concepts here that we could apply to uh, many different reports. Like I'm showing gold, silver, and bronze. That's a little bit contrived, but imagine if you had a list of grants and you wanted to categorize between federal, state, different types of grants or projects. Um, maybe you have different kinds of customers. Like in this example, I have gold, silver, bronze, but you might have different designations. Maybe, oh, I don't know, you assign them to certain geographies. We have a native field called territory that might be applicable, but you might further define that. You might have other classifications that you want to have. Maybe you have something on vendors. If we're tracking more expenses, you want to categorize different types of vendors. Now, there, again, there's a native field for vendor type, but you might want additional detail. These are all examples. And if you're looking at your industry, you can probably think of some other ones that might be applicable for you. All right, so we can see this is a good example, good report here. Let's go about adding some of this content here so that we can use it. So the first thing is uh, to make this report, I needed some uh, classifications by customer. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to hop into my environment here and I'm going to go into an area called platform services. And from here, I can see all sorts of customization options. Lots to talk about here, but I'm going to add a custom field. All right. So we'll take this step by step. Hit the little plus here and it shows me the very first uh, start here, the very first step, one of three, it says, although let's Let's keep an eye on that. Sometimes they are, they might add a step on us. We'll see. All right. So the first thing it asks us is step one. And this is very easy. You don't have to be a programmer, but it says, what object do you want to extend? So in my example, I wanted a gold, silver, and bronze on customer. And if you take a look at this list, this shows you um, a list of really every object in the system that I can think of. I don't believe there's really any exception. There probably is somewhere, but... This is a very thorough list. So in my example, I wanted the customer to be extended. I wanted to add that Olympic gold, silver, bronze. So I'll click customer. Step one is done. And now we will hit next. Step two, what type of data field do we want? So let's take a look at the arch options here. Lots of good things here. So I won't read them all, but check checkbox, currency, on and on and on password even, text. Uh, I'll, I'll clarify text and text area. Text is like if I wanted a small bit of text to have the user contribute. Text area is more like a really long memo field where they could add a whole lot of, um, your user could add a small novel to describe something about a customer in this example. Well, I wanted gold, silver, bronze. I guess I could do text, but someone might typo that. So I, I don't like that option. I'm going to pick, uh, pick list actually. So I'll do that. Uh, Multi-select would be if you could be both gold and silver. In my option, you're you're one or the other. So I'll pick pick list and I'll hit next. And ah, uh, that's the little trickiness. I suspected uh, Sage has said actually there's another step. So now we're on step three of four. That's okay though. The first thing we do we have to give it a label. The label is what the user will see. Um, I think I called it Olympic medal, Olympic. Status. I might have used something different in my actual setup, but I'll just use that as a as a placeholder for now. I'll tab off of that. When I tab off of that, you can see that Intact has used that for the field ID. That's notable. So the field ID means that um, that that's a value that exists. I can use this through the API. If I try to do an import, like uh, importing customers from another system, or if I have a, if I buy a book of business, I want to import a list of customers. 
this field, any field I make, will be available in my out-of-the-box import templates. They'll just be added to the end of the template, and I can use it like any other field. Great. All right, this one's a pick list, so we're, we're going to do the gold, um, silver, and bronze like so. A few other options you can read. Do I want this to have a default value? So I have everyone default as gold. I'm going to say I don't want to default anything. I'll make the user choose. And sort alphabetically, I like gold, silver, bronze the way I typed it, so that's okay. I'll leave it there. And the description is more uh, for me to understand what this field's purpose is, but I'm just going to skip that for these purposes, for this uh, example. And final, final little bit of uh, decision making here, is the field required? Is the field hidden? <laughs> you can get into trouble if you were to check both those boxes because then you could have a required hidden field. That's no fun. But uh, making a field required is just like that. That means if a user pulls up a field and they go to hit save, they have to make sure they pick gold, silver, or bronze. Hidden, hidden is interesting for other purposes. You might have something um, that's used in an integration or is the field inactive? We just want it to be seen but not used. And then finally, where do I want to place it on the window? I'm, these are cosmetic largely. I mean, I guess the required, and that's more than cosmetic. But I'm going to skip the section entirely. I could always come back and revisit this. And then I would hit save. Since I already made the field, I'm not going to. I'm just going to say I, I'm going to hit cancel there. And let's go take a look at our customers. So I'm going to go take a look at the customers I've set up. I'll go to order entry. I'll go to customers. You can see my list here. And I'm going to go into AB Square, my top one here. I'm going to hit edit on AB Square. And I can see Olympic status. I've picked silver. So that's not a native field. That's a custom field I have. And you can see it's working as expected. I already picked a value that wouldn't, that would not have inherited silver. I came back in here and I assigned that uh, after I added the field. I could have done that with an upload actually. This is one of those things where you can do a mass upload to do a mass update. But this is working as expected. I have that set up and that's um, ready to go. So now if I were to add any new, let me just, for example, if I add a new customer, that Olympic status is there. I could fill out the name and whatever other information, and I would pick whichever status makes sense. I didn't require it, so I could leave it blank in my example, but that's up to whatever the specifics of your, of your use case is. So now I've done it. I have a field here. So now I'm well on my way to getting to this example report where I can have a column for gold, silver, bronze, and so on, and get the report there. So how do I do that? Well, that's where we're gonna leave the, the last part of this video for our ABT Advantage subscribers. Thanks.